We now move on to the fourth of the projections which are commonly used in aviation, the transverse Mercator. In the normal or direct Mercator, the cylinder is aligned perpendicular to the equator. Another word for perpendicular is normal. Over most of the Earth, it suffers from the problem of excessive scale expansion. However, out to 8 degrees north or south of the equator, the scale expansion is within 1% of the scale at the equator. This gives us a strip 480 nautical miles either side of the equator, within which the scale can be regarded as constant. The problem is that there are not many routes which follow a parallel of latitude fairly close to the equator. It might be useful from Quito to Manaus, or perhaps Libreville to Kampala, but in terms of world traffic, this is still pretty limiting. However, consider what happens if we wrap our cylinder transversely, that is, parallel to the equator. This will now give a projection which contains a vertical band of constant scale. This is far more useful. We can choose whatever longitude we want for the meridian of tangency. For instance, Cairo to Johannesburg, or Istanbul to St. Petersburg. We now have a projection which is completely correct along the whole length of the meridian of tangency and is within 1% of the correct scale up to 480 miles either side of it. This gives a total width of 960 nautical miles, say approximately 1,000 for all practical purposes. This is a very useful chart. As with the normal Mercator, we start with a light source at the centre of the Earth but now the cylinder is horizontal. In order to make the projection orthomorphic, Mercator's mathematical adjustments are applied afterwards. We select a data meridian, depending on which part of the Earth we wish to map. We are going to cut away the bottom half of the cylinder. When the projection is completed, we are going to fold these two edges upwards to produce a flat piece of paper. We put in a parallel of latitude. Now let's try to imagine how this will appear on the flat sheet. Let's start by considering the distance from the North Pole down the data meridian. The cylinder is touching the reduced Earth along this line. The scale will be absolutely correct. The length of the line on the paper will be the same as the length of the line on the globe. But what if we look at this parallel of latitude at a longitude which is 90 degrees removed? This is the distance from the pole to the parallel of latitude on the globe. Whilst this is the distance on the cylinder thrown by the shadow from the light source. You can see that the line along the top of the cylinder is longer than the line down the cylinder. This produces an elliptical shape. Looking down on the flat chart from above the North Pole, if this is the data meridian, with its thousand mile wide strip of constant scale from the equator over the pole down to the equator on the other side, the meridian at 90 degrees to it, which was the top of the cylinder, is here and the parallel of latitude which formed our ellipse is here. What if we had chosen a higher latitude? Suppose our parallel of latitude had been nearer the pole, here. In that case, there would have been less scale expansion along the top of the cylinder. The result would still have been elliptical, but much less so. In fact, it would have looked pretty much like a circle. How is the equator projected? Imagine the light at the centre of the Earth shining through the equator. It will throw out a horizontal line stretching all the way along the cylinder's length. There will be one of these on the near side of the cylinder as you are looking at it, and another one at the further edge of the paper. 
When the paper is folded flat, these two lines will appear like this. And finally, let's look at the meridians other than the datum meridian and the one at 90 degrees to it. These will be projected as complex curves. We will look at what determines the shape of the curves in a later part of this lesson. We are now going to consider all the important chart properties in the way that we did for our previous charts. This is our list and we'll go through them one by one. The first of these is scale. We're not required by the exam syllabus to mathematically calculate scale change, so we'll just deal with the principles. The scale is correct everywhere along the data meridian. Taken all the way around the Earth to include the anti-meridian, this gives a line 21,600 nautical miles long where the scale is completely correct. This line is the centre of a strip almost 1,000 nautical miles wide in which the scale is within 1%. The projection has had Mercator's corrections applied to the original light source image so it is now mathematical and non-perspective. The scale will therefore expand in an east-west direction in a secant relationship, just as the normal Mercator expanded in a north-south direction as the secant of the latitude. However, there is no direct equivalent of latitude in the east-west sense. As you will recall, longitude works on a different principle. Latitude is in parallels, like slicing a pineapple. Longitude works in radial angles, like segmenting an orange. Scale expands away from the data meridian in proportion to the angular great circle distance in the east-west direction. We know that this particular chart will be orthomorphic. It is simply a Mercator, which we already know to be orthomorphic with the cylinder rotated to a horizontal position instead of a vertical one. The original perspective light projection would not be orthomorphic. But with Mercator's secant expansion rule applied laterally instead of vertically, the projection becomes orthomorphic. How will the graticule look? Let's consider the data meridian first. This is a straight line on the projection. Let's also look at the meridian perpendicular to the data meridian. This runs along the top of the cylinder. This is also a straight line on the projection. And we have already noted that the equator appears as two straight lines. Now let's consider the other meridians. We know that the projection is orthomorphic we have adjusted it so that it is. Therefore, meridians must cross parallels at right angles. Near the pole, parallels are close to circular. So the meridians will emerge radially from the pole in a very similar way to the polar stereographic. However, at lower latitudes, the parallels become more elliptical. The meridians must therefore curve so that they cross this parallel at right angles too. And on this projection, the equator is a straight line. The meridians must cut these two at right angles. This therefore must make a curving line. The three right angles which the circle, the ellipse and the equator make with the meridian mean that Unless it is one of the two cases of the data meridian and the meridian at right angle to it, the meridian is a complex curve. So that's the meridians dealt with. What about the parallels? We have already discussed this when dealing with how the projection is produced. We decided that parallels of latitude are ellipses, very close to circular near the poles with the degree of ellipticity increasing as we move away from the pole. At the equator, the ellipses have become straight lines. Strictly speaking for a mathematician, this is the ultimate case of the ellipse, 
with the ends out at infinity, and the elongation such that the sides have become parallel at the point where we are viewing them. However, for most non-mathematicians, this is rather an abstract concept. So as pilots, we simply say that the equator is represented as two parallel straight lines. Therefore, to summarize, the data meridian and the meridian perpendicular to it are straight lines. All other meridians are complex curves. Parallels are ellipses which become more elliptical with the distance from the pole. And the equator appears as two straight parallel lines.